Good afternoon, and welcome to the Stan Turner Show. Glad to have you with us. We have something we believe is beyond special for you today. This noon, we are rebroadcasting a show that we aired live on July 2nd, 2011. My guests in the studio here at KLBB that day were none other than Charlie Boone and Roger Erickson, the legendary radio duo who were so much a part of our lives for so many years. As most of you know, Roger Erickson died just a few days ago. Charlie Boone left us two years ago. So now we want to pay tribute to this dynamic duo with this encore program we first brought you in 2011. Good afternoon, everybody. Stan Turner with you. Boy, if you've been listening to KLBB all week, you know what's coming down this hour. We are going to have a royal ball here today. Maestro, maestro, music, please. Let's have it, George. You don't need the words to go along with that music. You know, you know, unless you've been living under a rock the last many years. That's the Boone and Erickson theme. Yep, Charlie Boone, Roger Erickson, one of the most famous and beloved duos in our part of the broadcasting world. They have... I did. I wrote it. Thanks for writing that for me, Roger. You were so sweet to do it. Did your wife write that? I'm not sure. Beautiful Margaret. You believe it, folks? We have these two wonderful guys here. Charlie Boone almost got lost in Hudson this afternoon, but Charlie, you made it. Thank you. I had lots of time, and I wanted to go via Hudson because I thought there'd be a big line of traffic on Main Street in Stillwater. Yep, there has yep, been. Yep. And I thought, well, I think maybe I'll go up Hudson Way, and what do I meet? A Fourth of July parade. <laughs> Now, I wasn't in the parade. <laughs> Did they give you a... No, you weren't in the parade. No, no, they, they just got rid of me on a side street. <laughs> then I couldn't find my way. I got lost. I finally found myself on the rustic highway behind a, a club of Corvettes. <laughs> red, bright red, bright yellow, you know. And that curved... It was a beautiful drive. <laughs> and that curved until I got to uh, 35. That's what I was looking for. Okay. And then I went the wrong way. And I, I stopped the postman... And the postman said, uh, uh, go the other way. Yeah, yeah, go the other and way. When you get to 64 and Holton, turn left. I did. <laughs> you said, you asked, how do I get to Stillwater? And Roger, I did. how do you get to Stillwater? <laughs> Don't commit a crime. No, no, well, that'll do it too. But you're here. Roger, you found your way. You oh, and yeah. Margaret got here. You left early about six this morning and got through everything. Well, I spent a lot of time here. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is you not a lot of time in Stillwater. A lot of time in Stillwater. What did you do? What are you in for? <laughs> Roger Erickson and Charlie Boone. Boy, they, you know... A legend. A legend in their, their own, own minds. minds. But actually, they're a legend in their own time, and they always have been. By golly, these guys did a duo on CCO Radio from 1961 to 1998. They're still the best of friends. Do you know Pearl from Two Harbors? Pearl Harbor Two <laughs> Wow! da 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 You better keep that, that music going joke, there, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, <laughs> yeah. December seventh, nineteen forty-one. December, December seventh, and uh, so we're getting, doing the, doing the forties, and Charlie and I were actually teenagers at the time, really? but but as we know, teenagers know everything, and we see everything, and we report everything, and we still have it here in our brains, and we're going to tell you all about it, what it was like, you know, uh, and finally, during the war, Charlie Boone becomes eligible to be drafted. And he is. And he becomes a hero. And he goes off. Immediately. Well, the war ended immediately. It did. <laughs> I was inducted now, and they called it off. Now, I I am just a little younger than Charlie. Less than a year, but enough to make a difference. But then I did uh, get... Uh, by the way, I was there. I had to leave a job here in Stillwater at this radio yep, station yep. to go into service during Korea. Yeah. We got I came back. Yeah. And it was... Uh, I tell you, it was a wonderful time here. I used to go off. At, I'd be on the air in the morning and until noon. And the last thing, have a maybe a, the news, mm -hmm, 1230. Mm -hmm. And I'd run down here to Muller Boat Livery, mm -hmm. where I had, a, I had a beautiful boat. Well, it's about eight feet long, probably. A, no, a little, fish, <laughs> a, a little fishing boat. Yeah. I had a motor on mm -hmm. it. And it started occasionally. But I, I would get in. 
and I'd cut across the river to one of the beaches, mm-hmm. and I'd have the sandwich and yep. Coke, and I'd sit there. The sun had begun. People going by in the boats. Man, this is a place to live. Yeah. Huh? Why I would you go to CCO Radio with a deal like that? Why I, I, I'm just here. here. Huh? Why, why didn't you stay, stay here? Uh, well, Bozo the Clown called. Ah. Oh, that's right, Bozo. Mm-hmm. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Bozo, but folks, uh, as you've probably already picked up, this is full circle for Roger Erickson. He started here. It was called W A V N. Yep. The same building, the same studio. Well, actually, it was W S H B. Was it H S B? White Bear. Oh, w S H B. White Bear, Stillwater, Hudson, and Bayport. Bayport. Okay. And then we uh, changed it. I can't remember what all happened, but anyway, decided on. We had a contest. What, it, what call letters would be? People send in call letters and why? And why? I bet you, I bet you there you was know, not just the call letters, but what did it represent? Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And matter of fact, we had some very good ones. So we got one of the ministers to come here, and we, we had they were so good we threw them in a pile. We had some minister a minister come here, so make it legitimate. <laughs> he, he made the drawing, and out came W A V N, which stood for this person. It started for We Accent Valley. News. Oh, that's what it is. Is that right, Dan? Yeah. Huh? Isn't that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, we accent Valley we accent News. Valley News. This being the St. Claw Valley. But, uh, but it's nothing but fun here. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was just great. Roger, welcome home. This is nice to have you back. Oh, it's nice to be it's here. It's good to be here now. Oh, that's it all. George, yes. you know, we got a clown here, too, don't you? You know, I don't know how I you stand on that. clowns, but uh, Roger Erickson, his career kind of budded from clowndom. How did you... You were a bozo, weren't you? And I mean that in all due respect. Mm-hmm. Right? Those are the clowns. How, 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 did, uh, how did that happen? Well, it was an opportunity to um, do a TV show, which I wanted to do. I didn't want to leave this station, but if I had to, it was for something like a You, you sold out for, for a clown, is that basically so, <laughs> Sold out they, for TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So they had, they had a... Uh, <laughs> they, they, they got films, or cartoons, of Bozo the Clown. Yeah. It'd always be in some kind of escapade. and But there was a live Bozo... There were bozos all over the country. Yeah, I worked for them. No, no, things. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> but I was, no. I was the bozo here. And I... Uh, <laughs> so I did the commercials. I uh, chatted with kids. Yeah. Well, hello there, boys and girls. <laughs> and uh, it, it was a great time. I go remember out. that when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd go out to uh, maybe uh, <laughs> a, after the show, go out and make an appearance at a grocery store because mm-hmm. they were advertising in our day. And, they don't and I'd sit it. there and the kids would come by to be... Backed up in the aisles about a thousand kids <laughs> uh, with with mommies, and and I would say to them, "Will, <laughs> what's your name?" And, and they'd look at my big shoes, and they wanted to stomp on them, which they did occasionally. <laughs> but if they stomped too far up. I got it. Oh, I, how can I tell them it's my feet in it? <laughs> and then I'd, then it'd be a uh, maybe a kid coming over with a very lovely mother. You go home and tell your mother she's lo- uh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> Ooh, I think and they either look at me like, what's the matter with him? <laughs> or, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to tell my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, back then... You this clown do, is flirting, back, isn't back, it? Back then you could do that. Were you married then? Uh, no. <laughs> not, at, not at first. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, clowns. <laughs> and an eye for the ladies. <laughs> well, you, how long were you a clown around? Was a clown yeah. all his yeah. life. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, a good, good in the best <laughs> sense of the word. You got to CCO radio from from clown. Right? Uh, yeah, yes. yes. Yeah. So then I, I I figured if I could get to CCO radio, not that I wanted, as I said, I wanted to leave here because it's so wonderful. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I got to WCCO radio, that'd be kind of neat. Get a little change, and then I'll come back to WAVN again later if they'd have me. <laughs> but, but anyway. Uh, what happened was it just the way I thought. WCCO had a guy on the air on Saturday who couldn't make it, and there was nobody else around. He said, we got to have an announcer. we got to have an announcer for the show on Saturday. <laughs> mm-hmm. And somebody said, oh, I hear this guy, this clown on television <laughs> has done a little radio. And I had done it all right here, of course. Mm-hmm. And that's how I... Got my first job at WCCO. <laughs> when did you hook up at CCO? What year? Uh, 1959. 59. Charlie came. Charlie came in the door when, Charlie? Right July before. July 59. 59. So you mm-hmm. both, yeah. both arrived yeah. there about the same time. Yeah. 
right? What uh, what a happy coincidence. Serendipity, folks. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. And and you're you're joining as a duo as a team was as these things often are. Accidental kind of seren serendipity. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Tell what us how that they? came about. Charlie, uh, yeah. Charlie had a show. I replaced Randy Merriman in September of uh, 1959. Yeah. In fact, I started the show October 1, 1959. Yeah. In the afternoon when Randy had his show, the only difference was they took the live music away from me. And I had a record show, because that's why they hired me. I realize now. Now I learned. Because he was a big jock up in they Fargo. They hired you for your brilliance, Charlie Boone. You were, you were a disc jockey at KFGO Fargo. Yeah, but that's why they hired me, because they wanted to switch from live music to records. Ah, records. Yes, and they were competing against uh, several big rock stations Right, at the DGY time. and KDWB. Sure. sure, they were big. So I played records. And then, when the soaps went off the air, Raj took over the early afternoon. Yeah. And we kind of dovetailed. Yep. They used to have soap, 15-minute uh, soaps. Uh, on the from the network, all practically all day, and then they took them all off because the television soap operas were coming, mm -hmm. and so they put them. But they put uh, those precious few from one to three. Finally, they took them off. And is that clown still around here? Maybe he can do that. But anyway, that's how it started. <laughs> we had no meteorologists at the time. How did you do a no show? Weather. How to no, know? We, we had actually better weather. <laughs> We, we have a complete meteorological station here. We call it a window, Charlie. We just look out and we ah. have the most accurate forecast we've ever seen. Right now, I'd say it's sunny, right? How about that? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Imagine well, that, doing a show without a meteorologist. He did the weather on my show. Yeah. And I did, did the weather on his show. And pretty soon, we were kibitzing with yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. And that was the start. And the chemistry, and the chemistry was there. Absolutely. Then they started selling advertising with us. Yeah. And then they said, you know, maybe... You might officially have a show here. And they eventually paid you. Is that right? Yeah, they, well, kind of. <laughs> it wasn't as good as WABN, but... It was <laughs> CCO Radio, was that listened to at your place? Uh, oh, yeah. Way back then? Sure, yeah, so you kind of grew up with it at the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the magic of CCO Radio. All things change. CCO has been an institution in broadcasting, known far and wide, far beyond this broadcast market. But it's changed. Everything else has changed, and it's different, and... I kind of grew up with it. A lot of people did. Yeah, there were rock stations that drew us away. But, Charlie, that's one of the reasons they brought you down here. You were, you were very big as you were down here up in Fargo. You met some interesting people. Bobby Valine. You were present at the creation. I was February there. February 1959. At a 16th birthday party at a Moonlight Drive-In Theater. Yeah, yeah. Kid was called at an awful moment in history. The death of Buddy Holly. Buddy, the big bopper. The night the music died. The night the music died. It didn't, thank God. It really didn't. The people thought it would. But, Charlie, you were the MC. You were already selected as the MC that night for the big Holly show. Across the river, I think, in, in Moorhead at the Armory. And uh, they put on a frantic call. They're going to go on with the show, even though the star had just died hours before. So the word went out on radio, probably on your station, too, and a young kid named Bobby Valine and his brother Billy and a band. They, I think they had to come up with a name right away. They were really a garage band. They, yeah, they had never yeah. played before a public audience yeah. before. Right. Called Bobby. I guess he came. You asked him, what's your name? you got to have a name. Yes. Bobby, Bobby. What do we call you? What, do we, what are we going to say? What do you come up with? Was it the shadows? The shadows. Yeah, the shadows. You got to know Bobby. We had him on the air with us about wonderful, a month ago. He's the sweetest man. He never got the ego yes. problem. String of hits. One of the great injustice. Here's here's a tangent I'm going off. He's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is an absolute disgrace. He, <laughs> he, he charted, I don't know, 15 or so top 10 hits over the years, and he's still not in there. He doesn't want to go to Cleveland. You know what I Right. I don't you blame him. <laughs> ah, who does? But he belongs in there, and uh, yes. Charlie, you got to know him. You've become great friends and have stayed that way, and it was just after he turned 16, he and Brother Billy and the other guys in the shadows, they got in Billy's car, came down to Minneapolis, and to the K-Bank Studios, and recorded their first song. K-Bank Studios. Wow. You were there when the history was made. Yes, and that, I don't remember it. I, well, I, I, how could you? No, but some things that happen early in your life, yeah, yeah. They, they don't assume the importance they do, yeah. perhaps until later. Yeah. 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 Well, lifelong, lifelong friends with Bobby. Bobby's hit there. It became a regional hit, and he was on his way. It was. That's, that's a great song. His brother, his late brother now, Billy, played those guitar licks without a pick. He used only his his fingers on that just just amazing great talent yes. you came down then from to cco from kfco and that whole atmosphere up there this was a time when rock and roll was in ferment it had been invented and now it was really taking off and uh, it was a great time and you come down to cco radio and uh boy 
the rocket ship was launched. And, and Roger, what a great... Uh, what Roger a great was an actor yep. uh, of the Lakeshore Players.